David, we need to talk about mental health, okay? Oh, yes, we do. Not enough people talk about their mental health or take their mental health into consideration, okay? That's why today's podcast is brought to you by Better Help, all right? Sometimes you just really need to talk things out, and why not do it with a professional, okay? A lot of us will drop anything to get help for the ones we care about, so why not do it for yourself, all right? This month, BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to take care of your most important relationship, the one you have with yourself. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't have to. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp Online Therapy. And we got a special treat. The listeners of our podcast get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash foods. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash foods. This episode is brought to you by Surfshark. The internet is getting more dangerous by the second. Hackers have more ways to target you. Trackers are following your every move because you're a badass bitch. And malware is hiding all over the web because they're freaking sneaky. If you use a VPN, you will forget about geo restrictions. You can access everything from different news sources. And guess what? The solution, once again, is to get a VPN by Surfshark because it will hide your real location and make sure that you are very different difficult to identify so web browse anything that you want and be safe on the internet and you can try out surfshark completely risk-free because you have a 30-day money-back guarantee get surfshark vpn at surfshark.deal slash dudes use the promo code dudes for 83 percent off and three extra months free that's surfshark.deal slash dudes Do do it, dudes. Be behind the foods. Do do it, dudes. Nah, nah. Hey, what's up, <laughs> y'all? Welcome back to Dudes Behind the Foods. I'm Tim Chantarong. I'm David. So that was fucking terrible, dude. <laughs> I well, because I really liked what I did on the last episode, but I couldn't remember it. So I'll wait till it comes out. I can hear it. I'll memorize it. It'll be great. You know, was I? I was. Uh, you know, I did a call show recently, mm-hmm. <clears throat> which I don't do that many anymore, but. One of the one of the biggest questions that people ask, and I'm pretty sure they would want to answer from you too, it's like they kind of ask like the idea of like how to be a funny person, right? And that's okay. a really awkward question yeah. because I don't really know if I consider myself funny. It just happens to be that people laugh at the shit that I say. Word, right? I feel like we're very um, conversationally funny. Yes. Yeah. Like <clears throat> I don't know if I'm like bit for bit funny. Mm-hmm. It's just you know we we like to fuck around and joke around a lot. Mm-hmm. One of the things though that I wanted to tell these kids is like, you usually become a very funny person or a good storyteller based on how you observe life, Mm -hmm. right? So like for example, like if I said without the day when I'm hanging around these like these kids, right? I was like, you laughed at stuff that I said, right? And it was just simply from stuff that I observed. Mm -hmm. The difference between me and you is that when we walk down the street, you didn't observe shit. Okay, interesting. You don't don't think of things as stories. Mm -hmm. You don't think of things as memories. Mm -hmm. You just go, oh, this happened, and you move on. Mm -hmm. And so that's why every time we go somewhere, we travel to a place, we always have stories to talk about because it's not just life. It's always an interesting conversation piece. Mm, Like you're you're just – we notice things differently. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's like I, I noticed that like with um well he's he's very odd like he has like <laughs> he'll tell me stuff he's like let me yo when I was when I was four I was like excuse me what do you mean when you were four <laughs> I was like how do you know but this will t- in detail <laughs> will know like the, the the sheen from the stainless steel bars on the playground yeah. Yeah, this is true, and we'll get into that after you make your point. <laughs> yeah, but that's just what it is. It's observation, right? It's yeah. like well, the way you kind of navigate through life and the reason why you can have so many stories, whether it's us regurgitating somebody else's stories, what we observe is because how we observe life is very different, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, it's funny because, uh, you know, so Chia, Chia literally doesn't remember shit before she was like 12 years old. And I remember... Uh, <laughs> like, that's a little alarming. I remember a lot of things, random things, from like as early as... Preschool. Let me ask you this: um, What is your earliest memory? Rome from Dormtainment asked me this yesterday, and um, and I will ask you: What is your earliest memory of like life? That's really hard to say, but I know that I have certain glimpses of like even when I was two, mm-hmm. right? Where I re- I forgot what my mom my mom showed me these pictures in an album, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then. She showed me like a picture of me chilling in the grass. And I was like, oh, I remember that spot. That was an apartment that we lived in when we first moved to the States. And I'm mm. like, well, how, what the fuck? How do you know that? I was like, I don't know. It just feels very warm and familiar. Mm. But 
I, I, I wouldn't say like an apartment, but I was like, I feel like I lived, that we lived here at this spot. Mm -hmm. Like this was our house. And she goes, yeah, that was actually our apartment. She goes, how do you know that? I'm like, I don't know. I looked at the picture and it felt very familiar. Crazy. But a very vivid memory that I remember was like when I was five and I was playing house inside kindergarten <laughs> and I, we, I was cooking up shit with the pot and this kid tried to take my pot. So I took it <laughs> and I started smashing his face with the pot. <laughs> And then, my, and then my kindergarten teacher was really alarmed and says, your son has very violent tendencies as Interesting. a, a five-year-old. Uh, my, my first memory is also from preschool. As early as I can go back is I was in preschool, and, um, I, and I was telling you this. I, I don't remember why I was telling you this, but it was a girl named Danielle who was like the hot girl of the preschool. <laughs> Which is already fucking weird. <laughs> it's so weird. It's a weird statement. But, but we, like, all the guys, all the boys in preschool had a crush on Danielle, okay? <laughs> Look at that diaper. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that squishy ass diaper. She's thick in that diaper, boy. <laughs> this just poop. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, booty. No, but no, we, no. Okay, so we're, we're in preschool. All the boys love this girl named Danielle. Look, I remember, and I remember, literally, I remember, like, she was, like, she was, um, she was probably Latina. She had, like, little dark curls. I remember that. And all the boys had a crush on Danielle, and she would play these games because we would all just follow her around. And so she was, like, so one day she would be, like, okay. And this was going to date kind of me as when I was in preschool, but she's going to be, like, she'd be, like, okay, you guys are the new kids on the block, and you saw me in the audience, and you followed me home. And Let me tell you something. <laughs> This girl, really early prostitute. That is crazy to me. <laughs> that's, just, cr that's actually frightening to me that a girl in preschool would say that. Yeah, man. I mean, that's how, like, I mean, I think we forget about how smart and how aware kids are they until, absorb everything. until you get back into that mindset. And I remember being in preschool, literally, and Danielle would do things like she would take her little shirt, put it over her shoulder. And like we were like, wow, Danielle, you know what I'm saying? And we would always follow her around, like just in love with this girl, right? And I remember one day specifically, I, I picked a little flower from in front of my, our apartments in Long Beach, a little white flower, and I brought Danielle a flower. And and she said, thank you, and she kissed me on the cheek. That's like, crazy. That is like, fucking oh, alarming. Oh, Danielle, she kissed me on the cheek. But then later that day, that bitch... <laughs> <laughs> was getting a shoulder rub from Jonathan Sabato on the slide. And I remember coming out and being like, seeing her and be like, I just gave this bitch a flower today and she's getting a massage from Jonathan Sabato? <laughs> Hold on a second. Did you ever confront her about it? No. She's just like getting the massage and you're like, well, look who's the whore of the preschool. <laughs> I put a booger in her hair and I ran away. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I just remember being very jealous, you know what I'm saying, and feeling like, wow, she took my flower and she's going to be there with John. She had to have learned that from her parents, like kind of like the power of like her sexuality, whether they were joking about it or not to right. the kids, she learned something from it, because that's something. a very, very specific learned behavior. Yeah, that's facts. Or maybe, you know, maybe like whatever she was watching on TV, I mean, who knows, right? But I remember, but I, like these are, I have very weird, random memories from preschool, like the time... This girl Lydia, <laughs> it was lunchtime, and lunchtime was right after the nap, and we'd all wake up and we'd sit at the table, we eat our lunch, and Lydia was taking forever to come to the table to eat, and it's because she she wasn't putting her socks and shoes on, and the teacher was like, Lydia, come eat, and she was like, I, she was crying, she's like, I don't know which sock goes on the which foot, and we're all like, it goes on any foot, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are so mean, dude. Yeah, yeah, little kids are mean dude but like that was you know I so I remember shit like that so I feel like my earliest memories were like I don't know preschool's like three and a half four let me tell you this funny story I told on my podcast but I'm gonna tell it here yeah it was actually one of the most embarrassing things that has ever happened to me in my life oh damn so when I was a kid <clears throat> I didn't have like too many friends but uh, you know the friends that I had I was really tight with right mm -hmm. there's this one kid that used to get bullied all the time and we were the kids that got bullied so we would like stick together well when, when I left that elementary school, uh, I went to a different school, and then eventually, you know, we all met up at the same high school. And so there was this girl who approached me, and I remembered her. I had a huge crush on her. She mm -hmm. was like the hot girl. Mm -hmm. And she saw me, and the last time I saw her was in third grade. Mm. And she came up to me, and she goes, hey, do you remember me? My name is blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, yeah, I do remember you, of course, because I had such a boner. <laughs> and I was like, because she looked even, she was hot, yeah. you know? <clears throat> and she goes, I just want to 
thank you for being so nice to my brother when when you when we were kids mm. and i'm like of course like he was like my best friend mm-hmm. right she goes yeah she goes you didn't you didn't have to do that and i was like what the, we're best friends of course i'm super <laughs> nice to him right right and then you know she gave me a hug and i was like melting whatever whatnot and then she goes away and then i see her brother walking in a line going into a class and her brother comes up to me and starts running up towards me mm-hmm. i'm like oh yo what's up how have you been and he's kind of really awkward and he's looking down around at the floor and he's not really making eye contact mm-hmm. and i'm like hey what's up bro? like what's going on and he's just like hi and he's like do you, I was like, hey you, like you remember me right he goes yeah and he says my name mm-hmm. whatever whatnot and he's just giggling not making eye contact and he runs back into the line and i'm watching him and i see him go in He's going into the special kids class. No, <laughs> bro. So she was like, "Thank you for being so nice to my my M- mentally, mentally challenged, challenged brother. brother." But I did not know he was mentally challenged. Interesting. My mind was fucking. Oh blown. my god. My best friend. Yeah. Was a mentally challenged kid. Huh. And you had no idea. And then check this out. Later on in high school, there was another kid. Okay. Came up to me. And this kid was wearing the same outfit that he used to wear in elementary school. It was us three. We were the trio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this kid's wearing a bow tie. Yeah. Pee Wee Herman like suit, suspenders, uh-huh. suspenders, and everything. He comes up. I'm talking to him. I'm like, holy shit. He's also mentally challenged. And he was my other best friend. And you were a part of this trio. I was a part of the trio. So I didn't know that my two best friends were mentally challenged. Interesting. Which now I have to go back and I have to wonder if I was in the special class. Well, uh, I mean, I ask that about you sometimes. <laughs> yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> no, that was one of the sh- most shocking things that I've ever went through in my life. I was like, hold on a second. My best friends were... Am, am I? <laughs> Is that me? <laughs> you know what? Sometimes, you know, here's the thing, right? Sometimes I wonder, I'm like... Because I see... I Someone tweeted the other day and they were like, yo, I'm... I'm an adult, just got diagnosed for ADHD, and these are like, you know, it's so, it's so, it's so nice to finally understand why I do this and this and this and this. And I looked and I'm like, do I have ADHD? (laughs) Let me tell you something. Everybody in the comments are gonna be like, no shit. (laughs) (laughs) They're gonna be like, have you guys heard your guys' podcast? You talk, you were supposed to talk about food, then you talked about religion for fucking 40 minutes. I don't know, man. (laughs) I mean, like, but here's the thing, right? Because there's this, there's the disorders like ADHD and like OCD that get so, um, you know, I feel like it becomes just a thing people say. Oh, I have ADD, I'm OCD. I don't even call it a disorder, I call it a special power. I, I'm down with that. It's a special power. It's very, very fucking different. We harness it very differently. That's why we can go ahead and bounce from topic to topic to topic. Yeah. I'd be surprised. And here's the crazy thing, people, that you don't know. Unlike most podcasters, we don't prepare shit. No, literally nothing. We, <laughs> we literally don't prepare shit. We just go, what are we talking about today? And we just go. And that's the power of ADHD, dude. But like, what if, you know, but what if we're not, but what if we just have trouble focusing? I mean, I guess that is an ADHD thing, huh? Yeah. Like we can't really focus. We always bounce. This is, this is the thing that would, that I would do, especially when I was early on in YouTube, when I would edit videos, I would edit for 10 minutes, walk away for 30, come back, edit 10. Yeah. Walk away, start doing other bullshit, edit another 10, do it multiple times. I always take breaks. Is this an ADHD thing? I feel like, cause when I see other people edit, they sit down. And they go through the whole thing and they're good. But it takes me like six, seven hours because I can't stop moving. All right. So let me ask you this. If I was to go get like actually diagnosed with this shit, like what would it change? Nothing. You just now know that you have this thing. Oh. What does it matter? It doesn't. You're you're successful. Yeah. You have a big sack of balls. They're very big <laughs> for my size especially. <laughs> They're huge. <laughs> Every time he jogs, it sounds like a round of applause. It just starts hitting his thighs. Pop, yeah, just like they make it clap like a like a big booty gal, <laughs> big booty gal. But yeah, I don't think it would change anything. It's funny that you mentioned that. When I was um, <clears throat> a lot of like Asian parents, I think I don't, I'm not sure now, but they have a problem. A lot of immigrant Asian parents that I believe, anyways, that I've been around, they have a problem with somebody telling them that there might be something a little off with their kids. Mm. Not in a negative or derogatory way, mm. but they might have ADHD. Mm-hmm. They might show signs of being autistic or something. So, mm-hmm. and I know this from a personal personal instance where, so growing up in a Korean household and Korean churches, hazing is a big thing. Okay, they would fuck you up and they would take you out to eat after, mm. right? And that's how we would bond. 
I don't think it's a very good idea, but that's just what I knew and grew up with. So <clears throat> one of my friends had a younger brother, mm. and her younger brother was a very goofy, really bright-eyed kid, mm. <clears throat> but he was a little weird. And so how I was treated as a kid, I treated him the same way. Okay. I would punk him a little bit, mm. you know what I mean? Sock him in the arms, do all the other shit. And then you know I would try to bond with him, but the bonding thing wouldn't happen. He would take it very, very differently. Mm. And I remember, because it was me and a few other, other Korean dudes that would do this to this kid, and I had to tell him to stop. Mm. I was like, hey, you got to stop because he's not really perceiving this or taking this like we did. Mm. For some reason, he's crying. Like oh, he, he's not, he doesn't feel like he's a part of the group. And they're like, no, 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 he's being a little pussy. We're going to toughen him up. <laughs> right. And I'm like, no, no, this is different. And the only reason why I thought that he was autistic was because my brother was a behavioral therapist. Mm. And, he de- and he dealt with autistic kids and he would talk to me about this stuff. And that's when I saw his behaviors from what my brother told me. I'm like, this kid is actually not even like lower on the spectrum. He's there. Mm. And so, um, like, I remember. Uh, just like I would like punk him a little bit, right? Like we would, I don't know, like pillow fight. I would smack him in the face really hard with it. And he was supposed to hit me back. Yeah. But he would just crumble. And I'm like, oh, what's going on? And after that, I stopped immediately. Yeah, it, yeah, didn't, yeah. it didn't feel like we were bonding. Right. I felt like you just being a bully. I felt like I was being a bully. <laughs> yeah. And so I remember, um, like, I mean, I didn't feel like it was weird because I, I talked to their parents about it. I was like, hey, you know, like we're around this kid and he's not really perceiving things and they got fucking mad at me. Really? They flipped the fuck out on me and they talked to my parents about that shit saying I was being super disrespectful. Damn. And I told my parents about it and then my brother talked he was like, okay, like we believe you but they're not going to accept it that way. Mm. Well, guess what? Like, he was young enough at the time that if they caught it early enough, um, they could have done a behavioral therapy mm-hmm. to kind of help navigate him a little more. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what? Because they were in so, such denial, fucking seven, eight years passed. Mm-hmm. And now he he can still function and he can work like a part-time job, but he's not fully there because his autism got, it's pretty severe. I see. And so since then, they avoided me. They avoid me. Oh, work because I know you were right. Yeah, and I, you know, I was getting frustrated at the time but I, I, I'm not a parent, so I didn't know. But I just, I wanted them to be like, look, fuck, you got you to gotta help this kid out. Mm-hmm. But they just didn't want to accept that there's, there's something could be wrong with their kid. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's just, it kind of sucks. Hey, man. You know, when you have your little baby, you don't want to believe that anything is wrong with them. They're you know what I'm perfect, saying? perfect, you know? Mm-hmm. It's hard, but yeah. And like I said, I'm not mad at them or anything. Yeah. I just feel like. I, I I'm always young too. I didn't know how to approach them yeah. about it, and my parents didn't know how to approach them either. You were like, "Hey, something's wrong with your kid." <laughs> I was like, "Man, your kid weird as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Give him the help he fucking needs." <laughs> uh, speaking of help, here's a message from our sponsors. Hey guys, this episode of Dudes Behind the Foods is brought to you by GoodyBrand.com. Tim here just popping in to remind you that what's a better Christmas gift than some fly ass clothes? I mean, goodybrand.com, we got new hats. Uh, Count your blessings. We got beanies. We got new flannels. We got all types of new gear. So go to goodybrand.com and check it out. Better help. (laughs) Better help. It's It's all all about that mental health. health. All right, you guys. Yo, today's podcast is brought to you by BetterHelp. You know, I feel like talking about mental health is so important. It's, uh, you know, uh, not enough people are addressing their mental health. You know what I'm saying? And look, relationships take work. A lot of us will drop anything to get help for someone we care about, okay? We'll go out of our way to treat other people well, but how often do we give ourselves the same treatment? Not enough, all right? This month, BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to take care of your most important relationship, the one you have with yourself, okay? Whether it's hitting the gym, making time for your haircut, or even trying therapy, you are your greatest asset. So invest the time and effort into yourself like you do for other people, okay? And check it out. Listeners of our podcast get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash foods, okay? That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash foods for 10% off your first month. David, so would you like a drink? I would love a drink. I brought a couple beers for us. Oh, please. And I'll tell you what, I, I, I like these beers. I just started seeing them pop up uh, in the past like year. Um, I don't know if you've had this mango cart beer. No, what is that? It is um, the flavor of the, the Mexican fruit carts. Oh! The fruta carts. 
Hijo le de la chingada. Fruta con tajín y limón and all the good shit. Well, bring it on, puto. So this is by a company called Golden Road Brewing. And um, I actually have never had the spicy versions. A and, little tajín uh, in there, perhaps? Yes, and, that, and, that, and I was really interested to try this because, you know, whenever I go to the Mexican fruit carts, um, I don't know if anyone else does this, but... When I get the, like, you know how, like, the bottom of the little Tupperware or the plastic shit, you know, all the juice will leak there, you know what I'm saying? I, after I eat all my fruit, I'll pour the juice into a glass, and I'll either, like, shoot it, or I'll put them ice in it, a little tequila, and I'll drink it like a little drink. Well, look at you, dude. Look at you, <laughs> fancy boy. He doesn't throw away anything. I really don't. It's been instilled in me since I was a little boy. Yes, he has 8,000 fucking hats. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> Pop Shop Live! <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Oh, this is a really pretty can. Hey, I'm not mad at this, man. Mm-hmm. This, I... Oh, and you get the tahine in there, too. Dude, I picture myself on in Cancun, <laughs> laying on a beach, palm trees swaying, mm-hmm. and a big booty right on the tip of my oh. nose going... <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the uh, Mexican fruit carts and the eloteros and the palateros. Hey man, fucking what's what? I heard like during the Super Bowl they were like pushing them away or something. Yeah. Okay. So the Super Bowl, you know, at the SoFi Stadium, brand new stadium in Inglewood, right? And you know, Inglewood is like you know it's it's, it's L.A. You know what I'm saying? And look, one of my favorite things about attending concerts, sporting events, even the club. Is afterwards when you leave, you got the ladies, the middle Mexican ladies grilling up, baking hot dogs, little street dogs. That's my favorite shit. That's like some very L.A. shit, right? And there was some controversy because, you know, Inglewood, I guess they were really trying to clean, quote unquote, clean everything up for the Super Bowl. Because, you know, you got a lot of money coming there, right? Yeah. Um, And so, like, what I heard is they were, like, kind of just pushing out. All of the like the the vendor like the like the Mexican vendors like the hot dog ladies the fruit carts um, just trying to I guess make shit more presentable but here's the fucked up shit I heard ICE was patrolling that's so fucked up because I feel like those carts and these people are like a part of what makes L A L A yeah it is it is a huge part of L A mm-hmm. like you take that part away a huge chunk is missing mm-hmm. I mean people some dude when people come to L A they ask for yo let me get an L A hot dog. Yes. How the fucking dare you? And we're not talking about pinks, all right? Pinks is great too, but we're talking about the L.A. street dogs, bro. Peppers. Mmm. Bacon wrapped. Yes. Steamy little bun. It's delicious. Uh, fucking amazing. When I recommend, when people ask me what should I get, what should I get in L.A., I'll list off some restaurants, but I'm like, make sure you stop by a fruit cart. Make sure you get some hot dogs after the club, after the bar, wherever you're at, because mm-hmm. that that shit right there, it just hits different and it doesn't taste like shit it doesn't it tastes like any like better hot dogs that i can make at home which is so weird when i get the fruit i don't do the chamoy do you do the chamoy i do chamoy i love chamoy i don't do the chamoy it's a little too it's it's pretty it's pretty acidic you know what i like just some fruit and some lime and some uh tahine for me i like the whole fucking shebang Mm -hmm. and the thing is though the cucumbers i just muscle through it (laughs) (laughs) i just uh, but I don't want to take it out because I feel like it has to be there. Do you do the jicama? I do. The, I love jicama. I love jicama too. Yeah, the cucumbers they throw me off a little bit. I power through. You know, I don't do the um, uh, uh, uh I don't do the uh, the what's the orange shit? Naranja. <laughs> no, not the <laughs> mango. No, no, no. The mangoes are great. I love yeah. the mango. The, uh, is is it papaya or is it oh, um, papaya? I don't do the papaya. Um, I so I, I say I so I, I say uh, todos pero no papaya. He, uh, if I'm ordering for Chia, Chia doesn't like the jicama. She doesn't like the coconut. I love the coconut. Me too. The coconut's a nice little crunch. Yes. I love it. I do not... I You don't like papaya? I don't... I, unless it's in some Thai papaya salad, I don't really fuck with papaya Dude, like ripened that. papaya with a fat squeeze of lemon on it mm. changes the flavor profile completely. Interesting. It gets rid of that, that weird taste that people don't like, mm-hmm. and it just becomes really sweet. I don't know why. I don't know why that it does that. Hmm. It's... Fucking delicious, you puto. Interesante. 
Oh, interesante. I'll try it out, I guess. It's fucking amazing. I And first of all, hey, can somebody explain to me why, how somehow, when these fruits are out of season, the freaking fruit cart guys, <laughs> <laughs> the fruits are always amazing. How does that work? Yeah, I don't know, man. What the fuck is Even that? Even their mangoes are, are always popping. It's maybe been like a couple times where I'm like, ah, oh, these mangoes aren't really like, ma- like mango-in like they yeah. should. But it's like, hey, this fruit is not in season. And then the fruit cart guy's like, says who, fool? <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know what I always tell people too? I always tell people, if you're ever in a parking lot in L.A. and there's a random lady selling tamales out of the trunk of her car. Hell yes. Buy them shits. So fucking good. Homemade, delicious. I think the the Jackfruit uh, Instagram page, the other day they posted, he was like, yeah, you know, uh, someone was selling tamales out of their trunk the other day. I felt a little, I wasn't sure about it, but I wanted to support. And I was like, bruh. Always get the tamales out of the trunk in the parking lot. Them shits are always muy delicioso, my guy. And very muy moistioso. Moistioso as fuckioso. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, I, I, it's weird when somebody, um, so, you know, we'll always get DMs and like, hey, what, are, what should I eat out here? What are the restaurants I should go to? Yeah. Like, it's hard for you to ask that in LA when there are so many things to eat. Because mm-hmm. I've lived here, what, 10 years now? Mm-hmm. I haven't even scratched the surface. Yeah. It's fucking damn near impossible. Well, let's get into it, David. So, I'm a fan. In your DMs. Hey, David, what do I eat in Los Angeles? Give me your list. Go. Do I look like your fucking friend? (laughs) Use Yelp. (laughs) It's hard because it's literally like, you know, within a month, it'll be like 40 or 50 people. Right. And it's just, I don't know, because I don't know what you like either. So this is a very long conversation. So when you ask that of somebody when you come to LA, it's not like this place specifically specializes in one thing only, and that's the only thing that's good. Well, let's get into it, my guy. We got 40 minutes. Okay, so let's talk about it. We're on a podcast, you fucking fat idiot. (laughs) So, what's your fucking budget? Let's Mm. start with that, because your Mm. budget is very determinate on what you can eat. Yes, I will give them bougie options as well as Broke options. <laughs> right? So if we're talking about expensive, we got to talk about what type of expensive. Are you expecting to spend, let's say, 80 bucks a person, 150 mm-hmm. bucks a person? Mm-hmm. What is it? Do you like raw fish? Let's say I'll, I'll do this. One of my favorite restaurants in Los Angeles, in the Culver City area, is okay. actually this place called Hatchet Hall. Okay. Hatchet Hall, seasonal menu. They they cook a soul food, but like traditional weird soul food. I don't know exactly how to describe it, but it's probably one of the best meals I've ever, ever had. Hatchet Hall. Yeah. It's upscale, very hearty, hearty soul food. Hmm. It's fucking amazing. Okay. I think that's definitely a food experience you should go to. Um, Once again, we're not talking about budget. There's obviously the typical ones. You have uh, Le Petit Trois, which Mm, is a French restaurant. We still got to go. Very fucking good. There's also, uh, what's it called? The Mediterranean spin that everybody goes to. Um, Um. Oh my God, I'm fucking blanking the fuck out. I go here all the time. Mediterranean spot. Pasta Mediterranean. It's like Italian Mediterranean. Mm. Everybody goes to this spot. Mm. Starts with a B, I believe. Mm. I don't know, but one of my favorite Italian spots. God damn it, go ahead. It's called Osteria Mozza. And uh, fire Italian spot, like super legit. They used to do this uh, tasting wine pairing menu where you would get like Eight little tasting bits of pasta with eight different wines that paired with it. Chef Nancy Silverton, by the way. Whoo! <clears throat> Popping. They don't do that anymore, not that I, since I last checked, but uh, you'd be surprised at how much tasting eight bits of wine can get you kind of turnt. You know what I'm saying? Oh, dude, wine. <laughs> we actually just got drunk recently, and I, I could not, I was just all over the place. I did not like that shit at all. <laughs> I was like, why can't I not get sober? <laughs> what the fuck is it called, man? Well, uh, while he looks, I'm going to tell y'all, me and David uh, recently were in San Diego shooting. And whenever we're in San Diego, sorry to get off the topic of LA, uh, we're in San Diego. And whenever we're in San Diego, we go to this restaurant called Herb and Wood. Okay. Oh. Urban Wood is probably one of my favorite restaurants, especially in San Diego. If I'm ever there, I always go. And we actually found out about it because we went to uh, early Send Foods. We went to a Best of San Diego uh, little, like, um, event all right and the chef there served us some shit they don't serve it at the restaurant anymore but it was like it was lap no not not lapchin but it was the fucking um avocado and um what's that like uh that like vietnamese like the the fish sauce they put in the fucking uh nook mom, nook mom. it was nook mom it was avocado it was some other bullshit in there it was fire we're like we gotta go to this restaurant and when we went oh my god so popping they got these little rolls that aren't on the menu if you go to urban wood in san diego ask for the bread that's not on the menu the server's gonna know exactly what you're talking about 
herby butter slathered on top, mm-hmm. flaky salt, mm. nice and sweet. Not as sweet as a Hawaiian roll, but just as fluffy. They got this oxtail gnocchi. Fire. Order the bread with the oxtail gnocchi. Dip that little roll in that pasta sauce. Oh, my oh, God. Bestia. That's what it is. The Italian joint. Oh, Bestia. Yes. yes. I think Bestia is always a great place to go. It's it's just, it, it, they never fucking miss. It's, it's always good. And look, in terms of... Uh, very Hollywood known restaurants. Um, even though this is a very like let's take Instagram pictures place, Catch is also fire. Um, you been to Catch? Uh, once before back in the day. Catch is great, man. Um, not only is there seafood popping, they have a really good steak. Um, if we're talking about bougie known spots in LA, um, Katana is in West Hollywood, one of my favorite restaurants to go to. They have this like, oh man, it's it's a it's a um. Uh, 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 what do you call it? The Japanese skewers? Uh, kushiyaki or yakitori. It's a yakitori uh, Japanese steakhouse, but they have all types of options. The shit's bomb. Um, Nightshade LA. By Nightshade! Sh- Poppin'! Nightshade LA by Chef Mei Lin. Um, everything she cooks and touches is fucking delicious, by the way. She's she's this weird, interesting like amalgamation of like paying homage to like tradition with just the right amount of flair and just doing everything right. I have a huge crush on her because her food is so fucking delicious. Yes. She also has a chick, uh, like a fried chicken spot too. Oh word. Fucking fire, dude. First time I went to Nightshade, I was celebrating something. I was feeling myself and this was the first time I ordered a shot of the Classy Azul Ultra. Ultra. Motherfucking $300 a shot. Híjole de la chingada. <laughs> and that I was like, muy expensive. I was like, you know what? Do it. Give me it. And... Um, I don't know if it was worth three hundred dollars, but it was it was great. <laughs> God damn, that's hella expensive. Yeah, man, it was the uh, it's like it's not the see through bottle, but it's like the like the black shimmery bottle. Yeah. I, for, I forget, but it was it was great. But you know, probably wouldn't do that too often. You know what I'm saying? Let's see, like let's go a little less expensive. I mean, by the way, we're missing like hundreds of restaurants. Yes, yes, yes. We're just kind of spitballing, spitballing, here. right? This is like stuff that I feel like you would go to that that anybody would enjoy, right? There's also uh, people love Republic. Republic is great, yes. Um, Republic I like. I, I prefer the other options more. I think it's a hit and miss sometimes for me, but I think it's really great. Um, <laughs> this motherfucker's going to hear this podcast like, fuck this fat boy. He doesn't know shit. If we're talking about, uh, uh, you mentioned Culver City, there's actually a spot called Father's Office. Um, Father's in Culver City, they have good. a Father's Office burger, which is rated like one of the best burgers in LA. It's like, this place isn't bougie, but it's definitely not like a fast food place. Uh, but the burger is... Poppin'. Poppin'. They were one of the first people to, to kind of put like this gourmet burger thing on the map. I'll, mm. I'll, I'll give it to them because the idea of having like this very fancy gourmet burger, mm. aside from spots that would kind of do up a burger a little more, but the way they did it really kind of put that idea of like, yo, uh, burgers can be fine dining. Oh, also, if we talk about poppin' burgers in LA, uh, there's a place in Venice, all right? Uh, it's called The Window? Yes, The Window. Fire. So they have an actual restaurant called uh, American Beauty. And then, but you can go to the window, which is there. Just like go to the go to their window and get these burgers. There's like these little smash burgers, bomb. So fucking good. The smash so burgers good. are always amazing, dude. Mm-hmm. Especially if you do it right, nice and greasy, greasy, greasy. <laughs> that means greasy and crispy. <laughs> nice and a greasy, greasy, greasy burgers, dude. Mm-hmm. Super fucking good. If, if we go to like I say, if you're in, if you're in the mood for Thai food, you have to go to Thai Town. Yes, Thai Town is so. I know. This is what I know. When, you know, he and I have traveled a lot in the United States. Mm-hmm. It's hard to find a place that actually does Thai food. I think, in my personal opinion, where they don't give a fuck about the American palate. Aha! You know, mm-hmm. it's, this is sawati ka straight up Thai <laughs> food. I don't want your sawati crap. This <laughs> is how it's supposed. Like here, and the biggest indicator for me of this is how they make boat noodles. Mm, interesting. The Americanized version of the boat noodles. They don't put the blood in there. They don't put like all those little other stuff in there. It's always just like uh, sliced beef and meatballs. Right, and you don't get that like that that the that the bone that, that the broth tamari, should give you. Yeah, that tamarind like pungent like punch in your fucking face type of thing. Yeah, and so uh, that's what Thai Town really does well. And every time I've had Thai food outside, we're like, this is the best Thai restaurant. I'm like, this kind of tastes like a two and a half star in LA. So to be specific, uh, one of my favorite spots in Thai Town uh, is a space called uh, is a space called Jitlada. Mm-hmm. Jitlada is popping. Um, and I first found out about this place because my mom 
had read that Ryan Gosling loves going to Jitlada. He found it randomly, and he liked to go when he was sick because the spicy food would make him just like sweat it out mm. and like blow his nose. And um, he kind of made it pop in. And um, I know I know the owner now. She's super sweet. You know, it's like a family run spot in Thai town, Jitlada Bomb, and they can make it if you tell them you want it spicy like Thai people. You're not gonna be able to eat that shit because they Thai do not give a fuck. Hate themselves. <laughs> That's what it is. Also, my other two favorite restaurants out there: Hoi Ka and Pa Or Noodle. Mm. Very, very. Yes, you talked good. about Pa Or before. And guess what? Well, guess who goes to uh, Pa Or? Uh, Harry Shum Senior, Junior, <laughs> Junior, Junior. <laughs> Sexy ass. Yeah, Harry Shum Junior, dancing boy. You know what? I'll tell you about this when you mention Thai places being concerned about the uh, white audience, right? Yeah. There's a Thai place I tried out. And I'm flipping through the menu trying to find the kapow because I mm. love kapow. You know, it's the the ground meat with the egg on top, the mm-hmm. spicy mint and the mint leaf and shit. I'm trying to find it because like literally every Thai restaurant serves kapow. And I'm like, you guys don't have like kapow? And on the menu, they're like, oh, yeah, no, it's right here. We call it it's spicy time. <laughs> What the fuck? Yeah. So they changed the menu. They changed the name of Why? it. Why? You it's, don't have to. It's called it's spicy time. And I was like, what the heck? First of all. Tight's words are very fun to say. Yeah. Don't 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 change that. When I want in my head, when I was like, I'm gonna do like a fusion spot, like you know, some like some Thai like tacos or something like that. Why change kapow? It's literally kapow. Yeah. It's so fun. Spicy Thai. Kapow. Yeah, kapow is way way better. So there's Thai town. Also, you have to go to K Town just to get that really good Korean food experience. Yeah. There's man, I haven't been there so long. To K Town. Uh, yeah, just because it's just kind of crazy out there right now. Um, So I, I always recommend for people who have never had Korean barbecue, which I feel so sorry for you. I had some Korean barbecue the other day. And I'm like, I can't believe there's places that don't have just good Korean barbecue spots. Ridiculous. Because it's, it's, yes, it's weird that these motherfuckers pay you to cook your own food. But if you've never been to Korean barbecue and you don't feel like cooking your own shit, go to Quarters. Because Quarters, the servers will grill it for you on the table. You don't have to worry about shit. And the food's really good. And the atmosphere's turnt. is a full bar. The motherfucker's packed all the time. Quarters is solid. Yeah, there's the, the so the higher end Korean barbecue spots, they'll cook everything for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's one place that I really like that's not Korean. If you want to eat traditional, just like Korean food, like stews and stuff, mm. there's one spot that I really like. They get really busy. There's no Americanized way to say this. It's called Chunju Hanilguan. Chunju Hanilguan. Yes. Chunju Hanilguan does a, a really, really good, like, Hemu Chonggol, which mm. is like a, a seafood stew. Hemu Chonggol? <laughs> yeah. And a Chonggol is like a, just a variety of shit in a stew and it's spicy as shit. And you have very, gumbo. Basically, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's Korean gumbo. And then you they do a really good pudechige. Which is we know Buddha uh, Korean army stew and their side dishes are fucking good. If you want a really good wholesome Korean food uh, meal, I love Chunju Hariguan. Chunju Hariguan. You know what I love uh, as a side dish uh, of Korean barbecue? What, what's the what do y'all call that? The little tofu shits. It's like, oh, uh, it, it, is it just a fried tofu with soy sauce and stuff on it? Yeah. Uh, it's just uh, it's just I think it's just called Jim Tubu. It's just like um, Jim Tubu. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Just All right. Fr- yeah. Well, I'm gonna go empty my little chim tubu here, and we're gonna take a break because <laughs> I gotta pee. This episode is brought to you by Surfshark. This video is not available in your location. Does that sound familiar, you porn watcher? If it does, then let me tell you why a VPN is the solution to your problems. A VPN doesn't only increase online privacy, which you need, idiot. It helps you avoid hackers. It also helps you access entertainment because the content you see is limited by your geographic location. I need a VPN and I use a VPN. I've been watching different shows from all over the world that is blocked geographically that you guys don't see because you don't have freaking Surfshark. So get on Surfshark so you could just web surf everywhere safely and watch all that entertainment. So try Surfshark risk-free for a 30-day money-back guarantee. Get Surfshark VPN at surfshark.deals slash dudes. Enter promo code dudes for 83 percent off and three extra months free. You heard me right. Three extra months for free. That's surfshark.deals slash dudes. David So. Okay. Favorite ramen in LA. Go. 
Uh, that is very easy for me. You're going to go to Little Tokyo, mm -hmm. and you're, go you're going to go to a spot that I am trying to remember as I continue to talk, but I'm forgetting the fucking name right now because we have been drinking for the past three days. In Little Tokyo, I like uh, Daikokuya. Daikokuya is not one of my favorites. Really? Why? Uh, it's just a little too unrefined. Really? A little too fatty for me. Well, I fuck with the fat. As you can see, I have many shows with him. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'll tell you this right now, Tim. If you read my story, saw my story today, I found out that I gained so much weight that none of my clothes fit, and that was the last straw. God damn it! Well, I like Daikokuya. Um, I also, if we talk in ramen, but this is isn't only in LA. If you go to the Japanese Mitsuwa Market, <laughs> that was, that's it. Yes. 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 If you go to the Japanese market called Mitsuwa. There is a ramen place in every single Mitsuwa market. Um, it is, uh, it's called Santuka. Santoka Ramen. Santoka Ramen. And it is so fire, so bomb, uh, the broth. And you can get this like special pork with it on the side. Oh, oh. oh. Their, their spicy miso mm -hmm. is so fucking good. So they're going to have like the Hakata Ramen, which is the one that's like pork bones and is boiled really, really high. So the fat emulsifies into the broth. So you get this really thick, viscous broth. Mm. But it's not gamey at all. Mm -hmm. It's just so fucking flavor packed and pungent. And you can get it in a combo with like an Ikura salmon bowl. Yes, that's my Bro. shit. I took my dad there. I took my dad there for his first ramen ever. He had never had ramen up until a few years ago, like legit Japanese ramen. I took him there. He thinks about it all the time. He's like, can we go? And my mom's like, your cholesterol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the worst thing for him. <laughs> yeah, but he, he like daydreams about it. That's like, uh, I think that's me and Mariel's like favorite spot. Mm -hmm. The next spot that I really, really like, if you're looking for an option, that is a vegetarian, but you wouldn't know it's fucking vegetarian. Mm. It's this spot is it's in between this spot and and Santoka. Santoka. If I want like a thick Hakata style ramen, I go there. If I want a clean broth, mm. like their shio or shoyu ramen, mm -hmm. or they like to call it a pearl and something else for their shoyu one. I go to Rakan Ramen uh, DTLA. Okay. Rakan Ramen is so fucking good. So when they opened up, this guy opened up a couple of uh, Japanese um, ramen spots in Japan. So just ramen spots in Japan. And they opened up his third or fourth store in the States and it was Rakan Ramen. Hmm. The noodles, I'm not sure if they make it in-house or wherever they get it from. Their ramen noodles are so good. This place reminds me of the ramen I had in Japan. Damn, like that? It's that fucking good. So I like Hakata ramen. I like the thick broth, but I don't... Because in America, their idea of what ramen is, is that... That's the only stores that open up. Mm. They never have shoyu. They oh. never have shio ramen. Mm -hmm. This place does that so well. Their side dishes are okay. I'm not, okay. I'm not a big fan of it, but their ramen to me is one of the best you can get in LA. Rakan ramen DTLA. Best pho, go in LA. <sighs> Ooh, that's hard to say, but I would have to go with uh, probably Saigon. Not Saigon Eden. Saigon Eden is actually really good too. Okay, what part but of LA is that in? That's all in like uh, you know the Monterey Park area. Okay, okay, yes, yes, yes. Uh, and and here's here's like okay, so I'm glad you said that because when we talk about LA, LA is very big. big. If you talk about LA County, which is what we're talking about, LA County encompasses a lot of shit. All right, we talk about from. From fucking Monterey Park down to like when I when I tell you like I'm about to tell you a spot in Cerritos for pho, a spot called Fu Tasty, which is like one of my favorite pho spots to go to. I don't even add shit in the broth because mm -hmm. I just take it as is because that shit right there is. Mm, mm, mm. You know, you could go to any general. I wouldn't say general. If you look at a, a, a pho spot, it has like four and a half stars, like in the Monterey Park area. It's gonna be fucking good. Mm -hmm. You know, there's just like little preferences. Some broths might they might I don't know might add a little more rock sugar. Some of them might be a little more herby. Uh, some of them might be a little little more fish sauce like so at that point it's just preference facts right so uh, i mean it's just really good and if you go to the oc they're gonna have a whole so many so many oh, options and we can't forget about nang la oh nang la is a very good place too oh bruh so i had never had nang la until um you know i used to get my hair cut uh right next to the nang la on la brea mm. and um first of all the the you know the fuck that bit their 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 beef broth is is great right fuck that bitch and i normally will always get uh, so the, the beef pho because I feel like that's what you do when you get pho right but their chicken pho 
Chia got it one day. Good. And their chicken broth is like, I was like, yo, my mind was low-key blown because like the flavor of their chicken broth is like, oh my God. Yeah. Uh, I don't even add, I add some lime to it and that's it. I don't add nothing else. See, here's my problem too. Like I go to like these same spots over and over again that I forget their fucking names. Because mm. I don't, like there's a place that I get a uh, bun sale at. And bun sale is a, they call it a Vietnamese crepe. Um, it looks like there's egg in it, like it's an omelet, but it's mm. not. Mm -mm -mm. It's like rice powder, it's turmeric and they fry it. And they even have like a, a bun sale pan that they cook it in. It's very like specific. But there's a spot in like the Monterey Park, San Gabriel area that that's like their main shit, and mm. I get it every single fucking time. It's actually my favorite favorite Vietnamese dish of all time. Word. Yeah, like pho is like on the lower tier, not the lower tier. Like it's not good. Wow. But that's just like the, the stuff that I'll go to when you know it's a rainy day. Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. feel sick. But if I want Vietnamese food, I get bun sale, I get bun bail, or I get um, I'll probably do that or like a. Like a kumtam, like the the rice plate dish. Okay, okay, okay. Super fucking good, dude. Let me ask you this: Can you find good barbecue in LA? Specific? Oh, I'm not even sure if they're open anymore. Bloodsos is still open. Okay, Bloodsos. The one in Compton is not open. You know, it actually, in my personal opinion, tasted better when it was in Compton. I mean, I agree. <laughs> yeah. But the one in La Brea is still good. There's one on La Brea now. Okay. And so Bloodsos is a spot. Uh, you know, it started off in Compton. Um. I think it started off as just a dude just grilling for people, right? Mm -hmm. They started selling plates and um, in Compton, and then they opened up a spot in La Brea. Fire. If you want barbecue in L.A., um, there's there's Blood Souls, and there's also a spot in Venice called Baby Blues. Yes, Baby Blues is pretty fire, too. Popping. Yeah. Yes, yes. The barbecue sauce at Baby Blues, and their option was fucking hella good. And we can't forget, I mean, we're in L.A., so let's talk about um, Mexican oh. food, tacos. Oh, yes. oh, also, to shout out to, if you guys want to try, I mean, at Adam Perry Lang, he has APL Restaurant. Mm. I love APL. Adam Perry Lang has changed my perception of what barbecue could be because he's considered like one of like the smoking gods. Right? Okay. A lot of people follow what he does. He, and he believes in like Texas-style uh, barbecue, which is just salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. He has a more upscale restaurant called APL Restaurant. And he also has an addendum to it where he serves his barbecue. But if you want the upscale experience, you can go there. Shout out to APL. I love his food. Everything he does is fucking amazing. Delicious, delicious, delicious. But if we want to talk about Mexican food, so many different options. So many. So many. We have Iberia La Unica. Ah, uh, yes. Right? We have Avenue 26 for the dollar tacos. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Tacos a Carbon. Right? Yes. Uh, if you're in the Paramount, California area, Yillos Tacos is my shit. I feel like their chorizo is better than anyone else's. Mm -hmm. There's uh, tire shop tacos out there. That is so good. <laughs> Someone, they were clowning me in the comments for one of the past episodes because I said, um, I want to try everyone's chorizo. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, I didn't make the uh, the connection because yeah if i was talking about regular ass sausage I'm like yeah i want to try everybody's sausage then i'm like oh wait that's funny but when i'm talking about chorizo it didn't even connect it's just chorizo for me. they were like yo we i cracked up when tim said he wants to try everyone's chorizo i was like god damn it i didn't even realize i you said little that. fucking chorizo nibbler yeah so good cochinos yeah, little, out there you little nasty boy <laughs> yeah you use tacos oh of course oh man but if we talk about you use tacos you gotta go to tam's burgers bro tam's burgers is a staple out here in the LA Long Beach area. Um, I don't, did you watch the Super Bowl? Um, they had a Tams commercial? No, not only did they have a Tams commercial, dog, let me tell you this. When Eminem and Dr. Dre mm -hmm. and Snoop Dogg were performing, they had kind of like mock ups of like some, you know, LA staples. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they had a fucking Tams. I didn't notice that. Yeah, I noticed, dog, because I was like, Tams? And I texted Rick. I'm like, did you see the Tams? <laughs> like, it felt like a part of my, like, family, bro. I was like, Tams! Yeah, he, you were the one that introduced me to Tams. Actually, you and Rick. Yes. And then um, the sauce. Yeah. Their burger sauce, their fry sauce. Tams reminds me of fucking Good Burger. Welcome to Good Burger, home of the Good mm -hmm. Burger. Can I take your order? Mm -hmm. And it's just a good, It's you know where, it, it reminds me of what a Burger King burger used to be. <laughs> right back in the day when Burger King used to it, it tasted like this but yeah. better damn that's an interesting uh, that's, an interesting that's how it is for me and it's like it has like that backyard barbecue burger feel to it yeah but better than you would make in your own backyard next time you want some chili cheese fries you gotta try Tam's it's chili cheese fries too. oh the chili cheese fries were really fucking good too you got them oh yes so I was, fucking good I was filming something the other day and one girl had been to Tam's and the other girl had never been to Tam's and the girl was like 
so where do you get your chili cheese fries if you've never been to Tams? <laughs> <laughs> it was like, if it's not Tams, then what where? Yeah, for oh, real. another spot too out in East LA is a place called uh, Asadero Chicali. Very good. They actually serve like uh, Mexican breakfast. Oh, word. Yeah, so it's it's really fucking good. Uh, I don't know how they're serving their stuff now because of COVID because they used to have like a salsa bar up front mm. and they had like uh, a tub full of grilled cactus mm. that you could add to your tacos. It, that place is so fucking good too. It's just a different experience. And if you guys don't know like if you haven't been to Los Angeles or just if you don't know too much about like and I'm just talking about one section of like Mexican cuisine which is tacos mm-hmm. which is what LA is kind of known for right I think San Diego is more known for burritos mm. we're more known for tacos it's all different right mm-hmm. you have Marisco's Jalisco if you want to go for the seafood experience you get their shrimp dorado tacos mm. super fucking good little slices of avocado spicy sauce on top deep fried with this delicious goodness on it you can get their uh, campechana over there too I think if you go to um, the the Grand Central Market, there's a taco spot. The pork one. Yeah, it's called, uh, I think it's like Tacos Michoacan or something yeah, like that. Michoacan is in the yeah. title. But you can get like every body snout. part. Yeah, snout, ear, fucking every part of the pig you can get in a taco Butthole. at this place. <laughs> yeah. Cornea. Back skin, ear tip. Pig foreskin tacos yeah. is, uh, is at this place, bro. It's weird because I, I I only know that because I, when I went there, I wanted to try every single one of the tacos. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like, dude, these fucking Gino could eat everything. Yeah. And I just like, got everything and I ate one. It was just like pig skin. And I'm like... <laughs> Not my favorite. Not my favorite, but <laughs> I see where you're going with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? You know, it, I think it, it depends. I, I have yet to try every every body part, but... I, uh, I had a snout taco. How, how was, was that? It was interesting. It wasn't bad, but the mm. flavor is always good, but that's when... It, I wanted to eat it again because I had tacos like this when I did missionary work in Mexico. Mm. So they literally chop up everything and they throw it into a taco. You had the snout taco and you were like, this stinks. <laughs> I was like, this smells yeah, funny. Yeah, this smells. <laughs> um, I, you know, speaking of tacos in Mexico, real quick... Uh, some of the best fish tacos I ever had was an Ensenada. Just like of course. walking around, little tiny like cart on the side of the road. I got some fish tacos. Fucking best fish tacos I've ever had, bro. Like <sighs> just so like crispy, fresh, popping. You know what I want to do? I want to actually get butt naked and then <laughs> spear fish my own fish and make and cook it by myself. Spear it with your dick? Yeah. Because <laughs> let's be honest, like it's not big enough to spear anything. You guys, David's being honest, okay? This man has an Hold amazing up. penis, okay? It's not amazing. <laughs> so, sometimes I look at it, I'm like, you, 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 you'll, you'll do. <laughs> well, mine is amazing, okay? I look at it sometimes and I'm like, man, this is a good dick. Uh, Tim's penis looks like somebody who has lower back problems and they just stretch backwards. <laughs> He's talking about because of my curve. He goes, ah! So, okay, so if we're talking about the curve, my curved penis, and I actually showed David the the Drake, the famous Drake picture the other yeah, day. Yeah, I Because I was like, let me just show you this shit, dog. And he was like, oh, you're like curved for real. I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not just talking shit, dog. Yeah, I thought it was like a slight curve. No, this motherfucker got back problems. <laughs> <laughs> Lower back problems. Yeah, oh, shit. It's been a long ass day. Shit. <laughs> 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 Alright guys, well thank you for watching this episode of Dudes Behind the Foods. Um, if you enjoyed this, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, rate it five stars on whatever you're listening to your podcast on. I hope we gave you some good suggestions for food while you're here in LA. Um, and uh, Yeah man, no need to DM us about this anymore, huh? Because I can't, I can't respond to like hundreds of this stuff. This is where you'll get a majority of it. Hope this helps you out. I, I appreciate you. I love you. It's just, it's, I, it's just too much to go through. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Team John the Wrong And I'm David Show. Bye. Bye.